Eighteen sailors and six officers is not a correct crew for the Type 7C boat. Type 2 boats had that complement. Now that there is a new complex people, system for crew management, the, series, the old number of max 18, 18 men 18 on board are not people. enough anymore. Way is it not I am wondering why the boat is so undermanned. Anyway, the realistic Tip 7 crew carried up to 50 sailors. Hey, you need at least 25 to, to operate normally. 7B, 44 to 48. And 7C, 44 to 52. Last thing, maybe add more crew is men to make the boat look so less empty. Has on board the boats had around 40 to 50 Anybody have any idea where I can see an officer in the space jack? Crew size from, from every man. So there, there are 20 crew beds. So I suggest we take the situation. The crew may be added by the day. In the future, update the lines. Why can't we just get up to the next level? We have a lot of tasks in front of us. And we have all because of my guesses based on what I actually see in the game's codes and mindless guesses from the people they made a good job in some parts and horribly bad in others. Point to such bad things, and my voice is going next time talking your about my devs in your hatred to me. Who dare to say something not neutral enough? No. Hello, Dougal here. I'm making this video because I got tired of seeing the same threads cropping up over and over again on the no, don't say that. I want to make a series of instructional videos to address the most common topics that pop up within the U-Boat community. This video is dedicated to players wanting to see 50 men aboard their U-Boat. The U-Boat looks so empty. 18 men is not enough. Real U-Boats had 50. Well, while many are champing at the bit for historical accuracy, we actually have to clear up some misconceptions first. Type 9s had 50. Type 7s had 45. And in-game, you don't have 18 men, you have 25 when you include the 7 officers you can unlock with reputation points. Everyone always forgets the officers. Which means we're just 20 men shy of our target. That doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, let's start this journey by taking a closer look at the historically accurate complement of a Type 7 U-boat. Four officers, including the captain. Four chief petty officers. 11 petty officers, and 26 sailors. No, that doesn't mean you should have 19 officers. We'll get to that later. So if there were only four officers on a U-boat in real life, then why do the developers at Deepwater Studios elect to give us seven? I'm going to pin that question over here for now and keep going. The four officers and four chief petty officers all slept in the forward battery compartment. The 11 petty officers slept in the after battery compartment and the 26 sailors slept in the forward torpedo compartment. The officers and chief petty officers had the luxury of their own beds, but the petty officers and crewmen had to share or hot bunk, as it was known. While one worked, the other slept. In game, this is relatively the same with some minor differences. The captain still gets his own bed near the control room, which no one else uses except for him. But your other officers get four beds to share. Physically, there are more than four beds modeled into this compartment, but they are not accessible. Perhaps they will be in a future update. However, limiting yourself to four beds does force the player to learn about hot bunking and balancing the schedule. So, for that reason, I'm alright with it. So why did the developers at Deepwater pick seven officers instead of the historical four? because it looks like they combined the chief petty officers with the officers while lumping the petty officers with the rest of the crew. We're almost there. First, let's talk about why you shouldn't have 19 officers. Not only would it make your user face an absolute mess if you controlled all the COs and NCOs, but there just aren't enough tasks to make controlling that many officers worthwhile. Courtesy of our community historian, Stostrup. This information may not be 100% accurate, but it is based on multiple sources, including the accounts of U-boat crewmen who survived the war. Working our way from the bottom up, Petty Officers, the Torpedo Mechanics Mate, responsible for torpedo maintenance, that's handled by your engineer. Two Radio Mates, operated the radio and sound gear, as well as performed medical duties. That's done by your Radioman Officers. Two Control Room Mates, not implemented. Two bosun's mates. That 
could be handled by the crewman. Two diesel mates and two e-motor mates. That is definitely handled by your crewman. Moving on to Chief Petty Officers. The Navigator. Definitely performed by your leading officer. The Bosun. Officer. Diesel and e-motor chief machinists. That's handled by your engineers. On to the officers. The chief engineer. That's also handled by one of your engineering officers. First and second watch officer. For the most part, that's also performed by your leading officers. They can stand to watch. And the captain makes the big decisions as well as conducts submerged attacks. So finally, coming back to this question. With the exception of the two radio mates and the torpedo mate, it looks like the seven officers you control perform the tasks of officers as well as tasks historically performed by chief petty officers. So, what happens when you add the chief petty officers and the officers together? And remind me, where did the officers and chief petty officers make birth on a U-boat? So really, the default limit of seven officers isn't that far from the truth, but we'll just go ahead and bump that up to eight anyway with Air Retainment's More Officers On Board mod. As for the petty officers being lumped with the rest of the crew, well, why not? Most of the tasks they performed are tedious enough to be automated, for starters, and there are 11 of them historically, which means more units to micromanage. Now, I admit it would be pretty cool if you could promote sailors into petty officers and send them to rest in the after battery compartment, but that idea isn't for everyone, especially when there are already so many people complaining about how U-Boat is The Sims, Greek's Marine Edition. Which is nonsense, really. The game lets you decide how involved you want to be. Yes, U-Boat has micromanagement in it, but it also gives you the option to go completely hands-off. See my video on crew management for more details on that. We have our 8 officers now, which leaves us with 37 crewmen to fill out that target of 45. 37 crewmen sounds fair, Dougal, so what's the big deal? Well, the game really wasn't designed to handle that many crewmen. In real life, sure, but in game we have some limitations to consider. When a crewman is idle and has nothing to do, the game sends him to bed until he's needed. Well, that's an issue because there's only 20 beds available for them. 12 in the forward torpedo compartment, and 8 in the after battery compartment. That leaves us with 17 men that will just stand there, idle, unless we give them something to do. Now here's a simple setup with 8 officers. Two watch officers on alternating shifts. The other two leading officers man the nav table. Two engineers manning the engine room in shifts. And two radiomen. But here's the breakdown of all the available crewman jobs in this setup during surface operations. Two on the relief watch. Two assisting the watch officer. Two assisting the navigator. Two in the engine room. One steering the boat. One assisting the radioman. And one standing by the valves. Now, there's a few more tasks that happen at irregular times. Cooking cleaning, smoking, and eating. However, these tasks are all dynamic and happen at regular intervals, so we're excluding them. Which means out of the 17 men who don't get a bunk, 11 of them have tasks to keep them busy, leaving 6 lobotomized sailors just standing around like marines on a troop ship. By now you're starting to see what I mean about the game not being designed to house that many crewmen but there's more to it than just an immersion-breaking eyesore. While the collision boxes are more forgiving when it comes to crewmen passing by each other, if you play first-person mode, however, you have a much larger collision box, and I have trouble enough just trying to squeeze through the diesel compartment as it is, without having to deal with these brain-dead cream puffs blocking up hallways. So if a compartment is cluttered with crewmen standing there idle, yeah, you're going to have a hard time squeezing through. Sprinting helps, but they will still slow you down significantly, and every second counts in a crisis. And while they may not collide with each other, 
they do form a queue when passing through the control room hatch. Where only one man will pass through at a time, you'll notice this most when evacuating men to the control room or when ordering them to bucket water. If you play in first person mode, good luck passing through this mess. The game cleverly calculates how long food and oxygen will last on the boat depending on how many men are on board. But it was originally only calibrated for 18 crewmen, plus your seven officers. So adding more men also means you'll have to stock up on more food and you'll have to keep a closer eye on remaining oxygen when submerging. Now if you're okay with all that and you still want the full historical total of 45 men, well you do you. I ain't your papa. I'll even drop the information below so you can change the crew and officer values yourself. I won't tell you how to play the game. I just want you to be informed so you can make informed decisions. And maybe I also made this video because I got tired of seeing new threads being started about it, but my aggravation is your benefit. So if none of these issues bother you, and you still want the full historical complement of 45, go for it. Otherwise, I would suggest limiting yourself to 8 officers with air attainments, more officers on board mod, and the 27 crewmen limit that comes with Salamander's expanded crew mod for a total of 35 instead of 45. That way you won't get any idle crewmen and you'll only be 10 sailors shy of realism. Couldn't the devs just fix this? Well, it depends on what you're willing to change and what you want to keep. Obviously, the first thing that would have to go would be collision boxes, so we could play in first-person mode without headaches. They could also adapt the consumption rate of oxygen and food to the increase in crew members. But the one final issue that would remain is that there's just not enough tasks to keep the extra sailors busy. They could fix this by adding more idle animations, such as cigarette breaks, cleaning, and eating, or reading a book, anything really. But that still means a very crowded sub which could cause gameplay issues when trying to evacuate compartments, or just trying to interact with the boat in first person mode, especially when you displace those extra sailors for evacuations. But that's it. Special thank you to Airy Tainment and Salamander for their wonderful mods, and be sure to check out the links in the description, as well as the instructions on how to modify the crew values yourself. And if you enjoy my content, please consider giving it a like and subscribe for more uploads. Thanks for watching. Now go sink some tonnage. And I've been chilling, watching the ocean with you. Baby up with the slow motion crew. And we up in the clouds when people change, but not us. And we just chilling, kicking it, kiss by the sun. Could be soaked to the skin in the mall soon. I know she got the good vibes.